Hey guys, hope you're ready to learn about how decisions are made in a perfectly competitive market and getting ready to start with the new chapter. So in the previous chapter, we talked about costs, right? So we have our baker and he had to incur fixed costs, variable costs, marginal costs, and we talked about all of those graphically, numerically, theoretically. So you should be very clear on all of those. Uh, and if you're not, I told you in that chapter that we are going to be using that in the next few chapters. So now in this chapter, what we're going to talk about is now your baker is going to have some customers. So that's what's new in this chapter. How much is he going to sell? What price can he charge for the good? And then finally, what profits can he earn? So costs is one part of that equation, which we've talked about thoroughly. Now we're going to talk about the other part, revenue and how much he can sell. And then eventually we can bring everything together. So there's your example. You know, you start your business, uh, you know, how much to produce, what price to charge, how many people to hire, all of those are decisions you have to make. How many people to hire, we've talked about in the previous chapter, you know, marginal product of labor, the cost of labor, and all of those things uh, in relation to that. Now we know, you know, how your costs are going to change. Now we're going to talk about the other side, right? So how much can you charge? And that's going to be based on how much competition you face. So is, are you the only owner of a bakery in a city? Or are you one of a thousand bakeries? That's going to be a very important question for you to know before you start your bakery. All right, so we are going to first start with a perfectly competitive market. And in the next couple of chapters, we will talk about other kinds of markets in which you can produce. So before we proceed, let's talk about what it means to say that you're producing in a perfectly competitive market. So most markets are competitive, but we're going to talk about a strict uh, side of that market, which is perfect competition. So just like in, you know, perfectly inelastic was a special case of elastic, uh, perfect competition is a special case of competition. So what we mean is a competitive market has many buyers and sellers, and you know, perfect competition is just an extreme case of that. So let's, you know, don't confuse the two. Most markets are competitive, most markets are not perfect competition. Perfectly competitive markets are very hard to combine in the real world, uh, but in any case, you know, we are going to talk about it to start with. So here are some of the requirements or the assumptions that we need for a market to be perfectly competitive. First, there have to be many, many buyers and many, many sellers. This does not mean two or three, this means hundreds and thousands. And again, you know, think about market as not just one locality. Think about the market as every, every producer that you can potentially buy from in a city or in an area. All right, so that's going to have many buyers and many sellers. Each seller produces identical goods, right? They're called homogeneous goods. This is what's a little restrictive because most things we buy are not identical. But sticking to perfect competition, we are going to assume that. And the first two assumptions is going to have a very important implication, which you'll see in just a second. Firms can enter or exit the market freely. So just if you have a successful bakery, a, co you know, a competitor can come and open up another, another bakery in your locality as well. They are free to do so. There are no barriers to entry. There's nothing stopping them from entering, nor is there anything stopping people from exiting the market if they choose to do so. So all of these we will talk about in, you know, in this chapter. Buyers and sellers have perfect information, so they know what bakeries to buy from, what products they have, what the price are, and everything in relation to that. And all firms have identical costs. So these are assumptions that, that are, have to be met for a market to be perfectly competitive. Right, so again, some of them are a little restrictive, but that's okay, we're going to start with that. Assumptions 1 and 2 have a very important implication, and I'll define what price takers are. Assumptions 1 and 2 imply that every consumer and every producer is a price taker. All right, so let's talk about what it means to be a price taker. So the assumptions from the previous slide uh, imply that no one seller nor any one buyer can have any impact on the market price. Market price is what is determined by the market, market for bakeries. So what I, when I go and buy a cake, I don't negotiate the price. The seller is not going to choose a price different from anyone else if they are producing in a perfectly competitive market. They take the price to be given to them by the market. So as we proceed with this chapter, it will make a little bit more sense. Uh, and that's what we mean, that each buyer and seller takes the market price to be given, them, given to them by the market. So that's what we mean by price takers. So think about what will happen if a producer in a perfectly competitive market with all of those assumptions charges a price higher or lower than the market price. And you're right, if, you, if everyone in the market is selling identical products, if I go to a market and one baker charges a higher price than every other baker, I will not buy anything from them. So they are not able to charge any price above the market price because any, no customers will come and buy from them given the fact they're producing identical goods and there are many other buyers that we can go buy from. So make sure you understand what price takers means in relation to perfect competition. All right, so proceeding with this chapter, let's talk about the revenue side of what you're producing. Total revenue, we've talked about a little bit, so you should know it, is just price times quantity, right? How much 
price you charge per product, which is going to be given to the producer by the market times how many cakes he sells or how many baked goods he sells, and that's his total revenue. All right, so that's just going to be proportional to the amount he produces. So one thing that you have to be careful of is that in this market, our producer can sell as little or as high a quantity they want, they're not going to change the market price. All right, so this is going to be a little uh, you know, important uh, detail moving forward, uh, but you know, just keep that in mind for now. And then average revenue, just like average cost, just the revenue side, is how much revenue is your owner making on average, right? So it's, if you're selling 100 units, how much revenue are you making per unit? All right, so we'll get the definition uh, equation in just a second. All right, so average revenue equals uh, total revenue divided by quantity. We know total revenue is P times Q. So P times quantity divided by quantity gives you price. So what we see is average revenue for a perfectly competitive producer is going to be equal to the price that the market tells them that they can charge. All right, so be, uh, make sure you understand what that means. Now the marginal revenue, again, similar to marginal cost, but looking at the revenue side, which is, it, and it's a very important concept, is how much does your revenue change by when you increase how much you sell, right? So it is how much extra revenue you get by selling one more unit. So marginal revenue is change in total revenue divided by change in quantity, and I'll describe that in just a second. Uh, in perfect competition, well, let me explain this equation before I get there. So we know that, you know, so marginal revenue is change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. We know total revenue is P times Q. So it's a change in price times quantity divided by change in quantity. Now the one thing we know that's true in this market and this market only is that price does not change. A perfectly competitive producer can sell as much quantity or as little as they want without changing the price. So keeping that in mind, this equation then becomes change in quantity times price because price never changes divided by change in quantity. So then when you cancel everything out, change in quantity just cancels out, all you're left with is price. So this is an important conclusion in a perfectly competitive market which is not going to be true in any other kind of market. All right, so keep that in mind when we talk about monopolies and other kinds of markets in the future chapters. So for perfect competition, marginal revenue equals price. So now, have, keeping everything in mind, both average revenue and marginal revenue equals the price that's given to the producer by the market. It's a very important conclusion that we have drawn from the information given to our producer. So both AR, average revenue, and marginal revenue equals the price that's given to our producer by the market. And this, like I said, is only true for perfect competition. So if we want to graph it, right, so if we want to graph, uh, let's grab both marginal revenue and total revenue, if you're going to be graphing, uh, graphing quantity and you know, total, let's say revenue on this graph and then quantity and price, both price and revenue are in dollars or some uh, currency, so I can just refer to the vertical axis in some measuring something in dollars. So total revenue, we know it's P times Q. So as you, as you produce more quantity, P times Q rises and the total revenue is just a upward sloping line. As you produce more quantity, price is kept constant, P times Q rises. Price and marginal revenue and average revenue for a perfectly competitive firm is just going to be a vertical, sorry, horizontal line. Whatever the market price is, we know that this producer, is, that's going to be their average revenue, that's going to be their marginal revenue, and that's also going to be the price that they can charge. Again, this is only true for perfect competition, is that the price that our producer can charge equals what the market tells them, and it equals marginal revenue, and it also equals average revenue. So this relationship is only true for perfect competition. So keep that in mind as we proceed with future different kinds of markets. All right, so let's do a numerical example and see the relationships between average revenue, price, and marginal revenue. So let's say I'm gonna you know, take a few points. Let's say you're looking at your price and how much quantity you can sell. If you wanna go from one to three quantities of uh, bottled water that you're selling. Bottled water again is probably the closest thing you can come to perfect competition. Now we know that you are one out of thousands and thousands of producers. So since you're such a small part of a big market, you cannot control this price. So let's say this price is just $6 that you can charge and you can sell as much as you want, as little as you want without changing the market price. Now this is slightly different than what you're used to seeing when we talk about the demand curve because the demand curve is for the whole market. We are just talking about one out of 1,000 producers. So keeping that in mind, total revenue is just P times Q. So price times quantity is six, 12, and 18. Average revenue 
is total revenue divided by quantity. So total revenue divided by quantity is 6, 6 divided by 1, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 18 divided by 3 is 6 as well. All right, so we see that average revenue equals price. And then marginal revenue is change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. So when we go from 6 to 12, the change is 6 divided by quantity is going from 1 to 2. So when you go from producing 1 unit to 2 units in this first column, your marginal revenue changes by 6. As you go from producing the second bottled water to the third bottled water, your revenue goes up by 6, quantity goes up by 1, so your rev marginal revenue is still 6. So what you see, and this is only true for this market, is that price that a producer is able to charge, which is fixed, equals their average revenue and also equals marginal revenue. So this relationship where P equals MR is not going to be true in other kinds of market structures. All right, so that's a very important implication, implication uh, for a producer that is producing in a perfectly competitive market. So hopefully you are uh, comfortable with the uh, introduction to perfect competition where we say that you know, how much can you produce, that's the ultimate goal is to see how much we're going to produce and based on the fact that you're producing in perfect competition, you should now remember for the next few videos that price always equals MR. So we're going to now in the next video bring costs from previous chapter into play and then look at both costs and revenue at the same time. So the graphs are going to get a little complicated, but hopefully if you're clear on the previous chapter and you understand what we've talked about in this video, you should be good. All right, so hopefully you understood everything in today's video and in the next video we're going to continue with the topic of perfect competition.